we're installing a roof runoff system, what is known as a whole house roof runoff system. We're going to be doing a little bit of gutter work to make this possible. Basically, what a whole house roof runoff system is, we run all the downspouts to main trunk lines, and we take the water typically to a single destination. In this case, it's the city storm drain. We actually run trunk lines down both sides of the house, picking up all the downspouts from the front, from the side of the house, from the back of the house, and we take all that water to a safe location. In this case, it's a city storm drain. We had to do some aluminum work because this downspout was in a wrong location. They poured this big cement patio behind the house. We had to put an extension on the downspout so that we can grab up the water and take it to the storm drain. So that's the best sod cutter you could possibly own. We've tried them all, we've owned them all. This one, it, a lot fewer repairs needed with this Billy Goat. It's a hydrostatic sod cutter. You want to put it on the lowest notch. So when you cut the sod, cut it on the lowest notch, then take a shovel and cut it into manageable pieces. That way you can pull it up in pieces and put it back in in pieces. Then take a flat shovel and just scoop that sod up. It's huge, man. What a savings right there. Get as much dirt on the back of that turf as you possibly can. You want to grab as much dirt and root. You go as deep as that sod cutter will let you go. And that sod cutter lets you go deeper than most. So you just pick up the sod and you just put it right next to your trench. But here's some more words of advice to the, the homeowner, the rookie, the, the guy that's going to DIY it. We're going to work on this side. So we put the sod on this side. Never put the sod on the side you're going to work on. You're going to be stepping on it. You're going to be wheelbarrowing over it. Then when you go to put this back, it's going to be really hard to work with. Just work smarter than not harder. Don't Taking that downspout and this downspout right under this fence between the two fence posts. Because right down here in that backyard that we're working in is the storm drain. All right, contractors and homeowners, get yourself an angle drill. Get yourself an auger. This is a four foot auger. Most of them are only three feet. This one has extra length on it. Goes underneath the sidewalks really nice. So this pipe was on the house. 
It's got a sock on it. This was used for the downspout. It was buried. This is perforated pipe with a sock. It didn't have any stone. You never do this. You want to run a solid pipe for downspouts. You don't want the water leaching next to your footing or you know next to the foundation of the house. A pipe with a bunch of holes, that's not meant for discharging water. You want to capture the water and you don't want to let it go. You don't want to use perforated pipe. This is one of the biggest mistakes I see, and unfortunately we see it all the time. And a lot of times, by the time we show up, it's too late. There's been costly damage done to the structure of the home. This is a true DIY. Can't get any equipment back here on this new cement. The guys are hand digging, having to do a little pickaxing. We're going to take this main trunk line all the way to the city storm drain. We got a main trunk line coming from the front yard. Put that in there. Oh, that works out perfect. The four inch main trunk line runs down the side of the house into the backyard tied into the city storm drain. Look at how good those white leaf filters look on this light gray house with white trim. I just love that look. On this color scheme, you can't beat it. All right, the guys are putting the turf mats down. This is brand new concrete, so we don't want to scratch it. It's all hand dig. Can't. Can't do anything with this brand new concrete. Can't can't drive a machine on it. So I wanted to point something out. We got a gutter on the second story. There's a downspout right there. This gutter goes across the entire front of the house. This is pretty common, what I'm about to point out. On the other end, it's the same trough. So you have another downspout here and then another downspout here. So there's three downspouts and that is connected. The whole, whole length, the side of the house here and then across the entire front, three downspouts, taking care of one gutter trough. They're two by three, so we know we're not gonna get this ridiculous avalanche of water, but we're capturing all the water off that second story. You can see what we're working with. The footing was poured way out we only have this much room to run a pipe in, so we can get a main line through here, that's it. 
the guys went ahead they cut that footing they'll break that out with a sludge you make several cuts like that with a cement saw you can see right there that'll break out real nice All right, before we put dirt on this, I just wanted to show you what this looks like. So Francisco has this two by three downspout. It's ran onto a, a three inch corrugated pipe. And then right here, we're bringing a second three inch corrugated pipe. This is another two by three. And again, I'm hitting this video before it's covered with dirt. Once we cover this pipe with dirt and it's held in place, then we can put this second one on. But you want to go to a Y and you want to use three to four increasers when you're doing this. We have a lot of water on these two downspouts. So when we merge them, because there's so much water up top, we got big gutter runs. We want to get into a four inch main pipe. Francisco's taping all the connections, all the joints. He's getting that nice and straight and he's going to make that last connection right there. So we couldn't get a catch basin in here because there's a cement footing that sticks way out. We were able to get one in right there. This is perfectly fine to have both those downspouts being wide into one sediment trap. Make sure to get a couple inches of pea stone underneath your sediment trap. You want to make sure the little bit of water that's left in that bottom of that catch basin, you want it to be able to leach away into the subsurface soil. Very tiny holes. You don't want to be losing a lot of water during a big rain event. The guys did a really good, nice job. Running that four inch pipe, snaking it through here, did a beautiful job. Man, those white leaf filters on this house just look killing. That is sharp. That is sweet. You can see when you have a concrete footing on one side, a cement walk on another, there's no need for a turf restrictor plate, nor is there room for one. You guys did a real nice job on that. They were tying in our third downspout on this line. This is gonna be the third and final downspout on this line. Got another sediment trap, go under the walk. And we're taking it right to the storm drain. Got a black turf plate for the landscape. Guys got this backfilled. They're getting it ready for sod right now. A whole house roof runoff system is a lot of work. When you hire somebody to take your gutter downspouts underground and just run them to a pop-up emitter, that is a lot easier than a whole house roof runoff system. When you're trying to take all the water 
to a storm drain, to a stream, to a ditch, whether it's being ran out front or ran to the back, there's so much more trench, there's so much more pipe. You've seen all the equipment, you've seen all the labor. What do you think a job like this is worth? What would you be willing to pay to have a job like this done? So that you have no leaks, always go male to female. Male to female. So you have to crimp this fitting so that it'll slide inside the pipe here. These white leaf filters on this house, what was the word I used earlier in the video? They're killing? Man. Wow. That's all I got to say. Wow. Those white leaf filters on a light gray house with white trim. That is beautiful. Now we have to put the landscape back together. Reassembly is the reverse order of the disassembly. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. It supports the channel. If you have any questions regarding this installation, leave them in the comment section. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood, and until the next video.